Hello, my name is Elijah Wells, and today's review is Joseph Kowinski's new movie, Top Gun Maverick. Taking place over 30 years after the first film, Tom Cruise's character, also known as uh, Pete Mitchell or Maverick, is called back uh, for Top Gun, and uh, what to say, he meets up with Goose's son, and what to say, the relationship gets off on, on some rocky starts. Uh, until he learns, uh, with the help of the CIA, that there's a uranium plant that will be active within less of a month from an unspecified country, but knowing about uranium and news, probably Iran, but I guess uh, they're trying to please everyone here, but uh, he must uh, uh, train a group of pilots for an, for uh, for less than a month to uh, destroy the uranium and, of course, a uh, fly that's just capable of to go through a rigorous mountain range and of course come back in one piece unlike Goose in the original movie of course. Knowing this is one of Tom Cruise's most important films of his filmography uh, uh, throughout his career that spanned for now nearly 40 years now this is going to be met with a massive amount of anticipation like even more than let's say probably the uh, last James Bond uh, last couple James Bond movies combined like the anticipation of this movie is pretty red hot, and it really did deliver on the movie's hype. Like the uh, the the flight scenes, particularly by Cruise, since he is a qualified pilot in real life, are actually really brilliant, as both brilliantly shot, edited, and also how brilliantly choreographed they are. Since I'm assuming Cruise has a plane of how planes are choreographed, how it's done safely, and all that. Since again, he's a pilot, uh, literally in all sense of a word. And also, his acting, again, is uh, extraordinarily brilliant in this movie. Like, I really like his performance. The Also, the cinematography, uh, particularly in the opening se uh, sequence where he's, like, flying uh, this uh, modern plane that try and go over, like, ten forces of gravity or something. Uh, uh, and like, he's, like, flying over, like, landscapes and flying near space. Like, that is such a beautifully shot, like, establishing scene of uh, already a great movie. What's also iconic about Top Gun is its music, like uh, Danger Zone, and of course Berlin's Take My Breath Away, and of course, and also Great Ball of Fire, which is also a great song as well, which is one of the best soundtracks ever. Uh, and also this movie also has a great soundtrack. Of course it has Take My Breath Away, and of course it has Great Balls of Fire, and of course it has uh, Hallelujah Danger Zone, but I really like Hold My Hand, which is a duet between Lady Gaga and film's composer Hans Zimmer and I actually like the, uh, the song in both ways in a sense uh, when it's played in the credits with Lady Gaga's vocals like she's always a brilliant singer when it comes to these movies like I like Shallow from A Star Is Born I like uh, more recent stuff like Stupid Love and Rain On Me from the Chromatic album and also Hans Zimmer's like in instrumentals for that song it's actually such a soaring such a beautiful song, like, we, I think we actually live in Hans Zimmer's world, so just get used to it, like, he just won the Oscar last year, uh, for, for last year, maybe for Dune, like, he, he's really outdoing himself with this effort. Outside of Tom Cruise, I think Miles Teller's character is probably the most interesting, of course, being the son of Goose, and all that, and dealing with his father's passing from 30 years uh, earlier. What I really liked about his movie is about his overall arc in the movie, like, in the beginning, he's uh, he seems to be extremely resentful and extremely like judgy and almost like uh, it gives uh, Tom Cruise this incredibly dirty look, like he was responsible for Goose's death. Like I think over time, particularly at the final battle scene, he just kind of overcomes that uh, cynical hatred towards that ca towards Tom's character. Uh, it's almost uh, like he wants to be the best uh, pilot there is within the best uh, group of pilots there is in America uh, which is in the best group being Top Gun but what he needs to do is just let go of that resentment like I really really did like that arc particularly in that movie like how it just came over it of course I've now sang the film's praise now I'm going to have to nitpick because I have found like a couple things I definitely had a problem with the movie like I think that in the opening scene it was like uh, there's there's no longer going to be uh, piloted planes anymore. It's going to be all automatic and that. Like, I think that's what Ed Harris's character said. It was like, oh, it's going to be completely automatic, and it never gets addressed throughout the entire movie. It doesn't seem to pose a threat to anyone. It's like, oh, you're a lot. This is the last generation. Like, 
it kind of just moves on from that. Like, oh, Carl, I, like this is going. This is kind of a big deal at that moment. Like, this should be explored more, a little bit more thoroughly. Like, I wish it was fall through a little bit better than that. I think there was one definitely gashing plot hole I found. Like, in a, uh, been in a movie, uh, Tom Cruise and Miles uh, Teller sneak into a an enemy base and literally steal the plane. Like, and of course, when they're up in the air, like in cruising altitude, uh, the enemy aircraft spots them. Like, okay, I think there's a couple of logistic problems like that. Like, I know the guards are running around. Like, of course, their whole base was bombed up. Like, with someone like kept guard of the of of the of the plane, like in case. Uh, someone may be going after it or something, or in case there may be some pe uh, foot soldiers or something. And also, was there any like CTTV ca cameras on there? And why is there security only consists of two bandit planes? Literally, like when we were asked, is there going to be like better security than that? Like a backup base like nearby? Like, I think this is kind of the weird, that really weird scene. I just couldn't get, wrap my head around really. There's also the inclusion of Val Kilmer as Iceman. Uh, given Val Kimmel's ongoing uh, ongoing condition, like uh, years ago, apparently he had throat operation, which did l literally limit his vocal abilities. So he spent most of the time typing on a computer, uh, like asking uh, uh, Tom Cruise's questions in a conversation and just replying back. Even though at the end of that scene, he did speak like he, even he, he's just he just sounds like he's almost kind of in pain at some base, like. I'm not sure if this is the director's decision or Val Kimmer's decision. I thought this was uh, a very sweet scene, uh, given, again, Val, Val Kimmer's health at, at this moment now. Top Gun Maverick is a very enjoyable time at the film cinema because the action scenes are brilliant. I really like the choreography in, in the scene and the editing is really great at the moment. I really like Tom Cruise's more vulnerable performance than in the first film where he's kind of a little bit cocky, but he had a lot to learn. This time, he's a mentor that again has to learn more about himself and feels more vulnerable because of it. And I really like the arc of Miles Teller and of course the gorgeously shot opening scene uh, which is extremely beautiful to watch. Like I can watch that scene over and over again. Even though there's like the uh, some plot threads that kind of go nowhere and the uh, and the uh, third act that kind of lost, loses a sense of realism due to one massive plot hole. But anyways, I actually really uh, enjoy this movie and this is a very good, uh, if not a really great successor to an already a, uh, a, an iconic 80s movie that should not be treated like a museum piece or be considered like a dinosaur film. But I am feeling an 8 out of 10 on this one. So, what do you think of Top Gun Maverick? Comment down below and subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and this is Elijah Wells, and bye!